This conference will now be recorded. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for the opportunity of bringing us all here together today where we can study from your precious holy word. Uh, our sword and, and, and uh, the, the weapon against warfare is your word. And uh, Lord, help us to learn how to wield our tools in such a way that we can give you the victory, not through our strength, but through your strength working through us. Uh, Lord, I just pray that uh, uh, for, for those people that are dealing with uh, C-19 type issues, that you would just continue to minister to them accordingly. Uh, Lord, this is an interesting time in earth's history. There's been nothing like it that I'm aware of, but praise God, there is your consistency is the same today, tomorrow, and forever. So even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of confusion, even in the midst of unknown, we can take a stand on the fact that the same God that delivered Elisha and Elijah will deliver us and give us the victory. And we claim that victory today. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Caller two. Caller two, who do we have? Uh, John Wilson, maybe. Hello, John Wilson, maybe. <clears throat> That's a last, uh, interesting last name. Yes, uh, maybe. It's a big last name. Very popular. Uh, there you go. There you <laughs> go. Awesome. All right. We're digging into Ephesians 4.10. Ten. Ephesians 4.10. Uh, anybody have that in any version other than KJV? Don't all speak at once. Come on, guys. Oh, I got KJV. Kyle, come on. Where are you? I need your help, Kyle. <laughs> all right. Brother Kyle. Oh. Brother Kyle. All right. <clears throat> Four ten, correct? Yes. Okay, amplify the message. And so here, let me check how it kind of starts because this the the message translation. It kind of bunches them. So um, the one who handed out gifts. We already covered that. He that descended. So it's going into descend rather than ascend this time. Okay, so. And the one who climbed down is the one who climbed back up, up to the highest heaven. Amen. 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 And Irene, do you have NASB? Oh, here, let me give her the mic. He who descended is himself. Also, he who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. Amen. All right. So I sent out a question this week um, in my in my text. Uh, anybody know what that question is? I never got that question. <laughs> you know, I keep on forgetting to send out to Quora. Um, and and uh, you're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Sorry about that. You tell me the question now, I might have an answer. I have my own opinion, at least. <laughs> I'm going to hand it on over to Mark. So the question was, why was ascended or descended repeated, but in reverse order? Okay, so if we look at verse uh, 9, we have ascended, descended, but we look in verse 10, it's descended, ascended. Any thoughts on that? And why would they repeat what they already said? I've got a thought, because uh, I, I, I think it's in Matthew, uh, I can't remember, I think it's three or four, when uh, Jesus goes into the water and he comes out and the dove ascends above his head and God says to Jesus, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. He's ascending out of the water as a, 
a new man, a new a new being, the and he descends into the water when he goes into the water, and he ascends out, and ascends no, out, ascends down. Yeah. Well, that's that's baptism, Romans six, and that's an interesting correlation. I hadn't considered it that way before, but I definitely can can see a correlation um, in this particular case. Uh, well, and in in Romans six, you do have we are buried with Christ in baptism. There's the grave, and then uh, to ri risen in a new a newness of life. So. I, I that's an interest, a very interesting insight. Anyone else? Yeah, um, handing the phone back to Mark or Mike. What? Oh, Mike. Huh? Oh, I'm handing the mic back to Mark. Oh, he's handing Mike, the mic back, back to oh, Mark. Oh, Mike back to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> I see that he starts out and this. This is just a surface observation, so it, there may be something much deeper than this. But he he that ascended descended first, and then he descended ascended. I see that there's it seems to be an emphasis on the ascended in some senses. We're starting with it and ending with it, which which um, kind of puts us into the situation we're in now. To to um, what would you say the the glory that that God is working for us and on our behalf and um so it took him through that descended in order to get to where he's at right now where he can be able to help us in this in this uh state of sin that we're in but it seems like it, it sure seems to me that that's an emphasis on the ascended um, thank you for that john second oh, anthony john well, um, as I read this, it seems like the um, – um, I, I still haven't put together the first nine, but verse nine says now that he ascended, which we know that he has ascended, what is it but that he also descended, descended first as death and, then, and into the grave. We understand that, but at some point – I, I'm trying to see that there's an acknowledgement that he descended from his position in heaven Amen. to become the child Christ and then grow up to be the Savior, the Lamb Christ. Um, and so he dis and it's kind of like in 10, he descended from heaven and then ascended back after fulfilling all things, or that he might fulfill all things, um, that the... Verse 9 um, recognizes that he ascended. So like Mark said, it's both ascended is basically the same thing, but the two descendants, one is to the grave and the other was from his position in heaven to become and start the process at all. Okay. I totally agree with that. that that's that's a, a, a good part of what I, I can build on that as well. It's like he, he, the very first... The very first man of the of the flesh, Adam, he descended in a in an un sort of timely un well, I don't know this not in a, not in a very majestic sort of way he fell and obviously you've got the human condition which until Jesus came well, there was no cure for this there was no fixing this problem but Jesus even lowered himself to our standards to our condition of humanity to actually achieve everything that he did because nobody would believe in this and how does a how does a fish relate to a bird and how does a cat relate to a dog so without that we'd have been looking at the invisible god but it would be all right just to be invisible but for this manifestation in the flesh to come down from the highest points in heaven I mean, to actually step out of that perfect place into a place where there's death, there's disease, there's war, there's poverty, there's, there's lies, there's deceit, there's all the evil of the world. Um, to actually just stand in it with us, that gives us something that we can put our arms around, we can hold on to it, we can grasp it fully. And it's got a beating pulse in heart, it's alive. I mean, this, the, the, the verse that jumps out to me is Matthew 20, 28. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but he came to serve others 
and to give his life. I mean, everything about him descends down beneath everybody to lift everybody up on his shoulders. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, he had to go. He had to go to the point of um, the second death. He had to go to the point to. He had to go to the point from being God in heaven to coming down to experiencing that second death and then uh, rising out of that because of, um, you know, no sin. Uh, so he, when he rose out of that, he took all of us with him. He made the possibility of salvation for everybody through that process Amen. that's shown there. Amen. I'll also see some. Kyle, Brother Kyle. So Paul, like, I think he was trying to help us get this distinction that Christ coming into the earth did not change who he is. So this the same one that was was in the beginning with God before the foundations of the earth were laid or whatever and all the creation story and all of that stuff. When he took upon himself flesh, he became like man so that man can conform into the image and likeness of God so that we can become like Christ. So he came and took upon our condition so that we can come and take upon ourselves his condition, right? Because if, yeah. if Adam could curse us with a cursed nature, how much more can the blessed nature of Christ himself bless Amen. us with his nature? So he's also, I think in verse 10, letting us know that the same one who was sent down from the Father is that same one who has gone all the way down. And maybe it means, like for me, I'm thinking in this moment that he descended like a servant. To, to the lowest depths of, of their despair, their, their sorrow. He came for the lonely, the brokenhearted, the widows, the orphans. So he went to the low places where people would ignore them, and he came and talked to the shepherds. And then now he's rising up past all, like past all, whatever, if there's multiple levels of heaven, it doesn't matter. He's risen above all principality, everything. And he went all the way to the top. So he's trying to make a distinction that the one who has come down is also the same one who has set us free and gone up that we might right. join him where he is. So he's kind of like for me in these parentheses, I'm seeing he wants us to know that he is the same one. He did not he did. change because Amen. of his flesh. And it, it's almost giving me this connotation that. I change and I am who I am because of who he says I am. My flesh does not tell me who I am because I am not my flesh. I am my spirit. Amen. Amen. It's like, it's, it's like man created. I mean, Adam, through Adam came the law of sin and death because he brought, as it says in Romans 5, uh, sin and death came through one man. It came through. It came through Adam. He brought this into the world, and he brought this fallen nature to mankind. But God is that perfect that when He manifests everything that He is, all His goodness into His Son, His exact image, His exact representation. But as Kyle said, within the flesh, He is that majestic. He showed how, even though unreasonable, this law of sin and death is that everybody can fail it. He showed us that there is a way to defeat it because he brung the resurrection. He, he shed his blood and descended. But the power comes in the resurrection when he shows us that death is not the end. Death is the beginning. And death is the beginning opens the doorways into our purpose, our life to, to serve and worship and praise God and be with him on the highest place by first, like that seed that um, Guy's wife was telling us about, when it goes into the ground, it dies and it changes. And it's this, he changes us by being like us. He changes. We then can see how he changes and become like him in that image, as Kyle said. And, and I, also, I also thought of the foolishness to think that one man is just going to sacrifice himself. I, I, I could hear the enemy thinking like, 
oh, this one random Jewish kid from Nazareth is just, what, going to kill himself for this stupid prophecy or something? And they let it happen, not knowing that that was exactly what needed to happen in order to secure everything. And, like, it's, it's almost like he allowed the enemy to do what he did to reveal the need for the Savior, because if he didn't, I, I might have walked past him and not noticed that I needed him. What what it what what the law afforded me was the understanding of my need for a savior, but now he has come. He's he's with me by grace through faith through Amen. the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and move forward. Uh, well, can uh, I uh, interrupt that? Okay, John. Go, uh, <laughs> may, maybe we won't get beyond the first base today. That's okay. <laughs> go ahead, John. Well, one of the things that comes to my mind in this is the reality or the realization that what we partake of Christ is his character. And when we when we receive Christ um, and we receive his character, we need to understand that he is authoring his character in us by our obedience. But through that, we're able to say in chapter four of first John Okay, First John 4, verse 2, well, it's verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they of God, because many false prophets have gone out of, false professors have gone out of the world. But verse 2 says, Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So what we've been talking about here is the reality that Amen. we all receive the the divine nature of Jesus Christ that replaces the carnal nature and we can live like him. That's what we receive is that's how we become like him. And he's going to retain his humanity throughout eternity so that that identity never never uh, dis- dissuades or, or or gets less. It's always going to be tight with us, which is uh, that's amazing to me. But anyway, that was my thought. Awesome. I have some real quick. Go ahead. So in Matthew chapter twenty three verse twenty seven, it says, "Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but within full of dead men's bones." And of all uncleanness, until today, I just, uh, I was fellowshipping with a brother. I never questioned the fact that it's not just, maybe it's their bones too, but it's dead men's bones. Like other people's bones are trapped in this facade of religion and they're keeping the bones dead inside of their religion. So as Brother John was talking, I I was thinking about how this false, Identity in Christ is keeping the dead, dry bones, and they keep like uh, it's almost like they can't Amen. be brought back to life in that tomb of dead religion. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Like people get bound back to the law of sin and death. I mean, if you are preaching wrath, it takes a lot of understanding really before you can start to understand what wrath really is. Because if something loves, then how can it wrath? And if if the devil is the one with the power of death, as said in in Hebrews 2.14, it says that, that Jesus came that he might break the power of the one who held the power of death. So that clarifies who's the one doing the death and the, and the killing. That mm-hmm. if you are putting fear on people, to a certain degree, yet it depends on the spirit, as John said, in which it's done. If the spirit's in Jesus Christ, as in Jesus came and he died and he resurrected, bringing life, but if it's in the spirit of I condemn you, and da, 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 you're basically mentally mind murdering everybody because you're breaking Jesus' other command, which is Amen. to be careful what you think and what you do. And you're actually condemning yourself by condemning others because Jesus never condemned anybody. He never came to condemn, but he came to, to set everybody free. Yeah. And th- yeah. when people do this. By the way, by the way, by the way, who is it that condemns? Satan. Satan. Yeah. The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Amen. The accuser of the brethren, Revelation 12. 
day and yeah. night he accuses us day and night <laughs> i mean right. if you look at, if you look and at you job know. it goes off track a little bit if you look at job and in my opinion because if Satan was Satan, can't, in my opinion, because of what Guy showed me, I seen that Satan left heaven. He cast himself, and he brought, he took a third of the stars with him, and it says that in Revelation. So we have to accept that's what it says. Um, he, he did this, and when he did this, he had he blotched his copybook. Really, he'd not got any faith. So how can he return to the Father without going through Jesus Christ? He can't. So how is he then in Job speaking? With, with God, in the presence of God Almighty himself. He, he has to have been doing this before at the foundation because this is when God's predestinating Job. He's looking at you, he's looking at John, he's looking at Guy, he's looking at Wilson, he's, he's looking at Marcel, he's, he's looking at Paddy, he's looking at Rose, and he's saying, these are my children, look how good they are, look at what they're going to do. They're going to love me as I love them. And Satan's like, no, 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 because I'm going to interfere in their lives and I'm going to turn them against you. And, and he's like, it's not going to work. And he had that faith in us before we even, even breathed that breath that he blew into our nostrils. Amen. Amen. All right. Do we move forward? Are we just going to stay here uh, digging into this scripture? This Kyle week? has Kyle has one more. Kyle. Just one more. When, when you talked yeah, about okay, the wrath so of God, I'm, I'm putting the, I'm 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 making a note of this. Kyle just has one more. I got it. Okay. <laughs> when you talk about the wrath, the wrath of God. What I thought about today was there was a a story I read online about a a parent who had to put their dog down with a gun because it was attacking their child. There was a wrath that the parent exuded to defend their child because their child was being threatened with death. God is not turning his wrath against the children. He has sent his son to die to prove he loves. He's turned his righteous love and wrath against the things which has come to kill his children. And that's why he's a loving father, because he will not kill his children. He's going to kill the thing that is trying to kill his children and thereby set them free to Amen. also set others, others free and come home. Amen. Amen. Can I add to that? Okay. Uh -uh. No, can't do it. Can't do <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I can, well, I can see that and I can accept it in this way. When you, the world is the outer darkness and we walk in the light with Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ in God's light that he intended for us as purpose. And as purpose, what he commands us to do is to go out into the world and preach the gospel. In that way, we are God's wrath. We are going out into that world and we are bringing forth the gospel because our wrath is wow. to save people and bring people into the light so that they don't perish, so they're not wasted, so their lives are not in futility but the wrath of man doesn't stay there because the wrath of god still resides upon man because it is the wrath of man that wages war against god and when he does that he can't box with god you can't reach up and, and hit god you can't hurt god the only one thing that you can do is afflict yourself because your sins your own afflictions are the things that condemn your own soul. You, whatever you do, you're doing unto yourself. Just as we said, if you're preaching wrath and you're going to burn, you're going to die, turn or burn, blah, blah, blah. You, yeah. You're just turning and burning. You're just roasting yourself. And, and that is the wrath of God is man is condemning himself. And God is not happy that man wants to waste his life. If you've put so much effort into giving life, imagine the heartbreak and the heartache of watching that very thing reject its own purpose, life. Amen. All right. I'm going to try this again. <laughs> um, all right. We're going to move forward to um, the uh, Ephesians 4, uh, 8 through 10, in context, KJV. Who's got that for me? Come on, guys. You're very talkative. Now you're not. Come on. I can do it. All right. Here we go. I've got, I've got uh, Mark. Mark. Ephesians chapter 4, starting with verse 8. Why, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captive, captivity captive 
and gave gifts to men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended far above all he heavens, that he might fill all things. Huh. Amen. Amen. Wow, okay. So I just, real. okay, now here we go. Um, all right, so we're looking in verse 10, KJV. We're looking for words that occur more than once. What? No, just to 10. Um, that. Words, that. Okay, how many times do we have that? Three. Well, I only saw it twice, but now I see it three. Um, yep. uh, all right. Anything else? Hey. Oh, how many times do we have all? I see that twice. Oh, yes. Let's take a look. Hey, yep. Man. I see that twice. All right. Anything else? Anthony hey. had he, he. He. Anthony had he. All right. How many he's, Anthony? Two, I think. Yeah, I think yep. you're right. I think you're right. Except for one starts with the capital, so that doesn't count, right? No, I'm just. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All righty. So who's going to break this up in segments for me? I can. Go ahead, Marcel, I think that was. Yeah. Uh, he as one, as who is it, it's Jesus. That descended, I've got that as two. Is, I've got that as its own and because it is like, uh, it's like a being thing. Uh, the same, also I've got that as uh, far, that ascended up five, far above six, all seven, heavens, eight, that he might, nine, fill all things, ten. Okay, so you're trying to, you're, you're trying to keep up with uh, Brother Kyle there, I see. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He's not even okay. got a <laughs> There you go. Caller three. Who's caller three? Somebody just joined on the phone uh, uh, from the phone. Who's caller three today? Yeah. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, guys. This is Stephen from yesterday. Hi, Stephen. Welcome to the call. Awesome. Thank you. We are studying here Ephesians four ten. And um, I, I use a, as the base, I use a KJV. Right now we're just kind of breaking this. Mis we are massaging the scripture. Uh, why would I use the word massaging? I can't figure it out. Um, anyway, so anybody else have another? Uh, okay, I'm going to hand the mic over to Mark. So it says, he that descended, I'd call that one, is the same also, I'd call that too, that ascended up far, I would call that the third, above all heavens, the fourth, that he might fulfill all things. Um, I'd call that the one there. Well, there's five. All right. So anyone else press uh, want, want to bring theirs forward or shall we move forward? Let's move forward to uh, the de two definitions that we have today. The two definitions we have are descended and ascended. We're getting this from Iger Apps Bible Concordance and Strong's offline. There's only two of them, so I'll read them both. Descended, to descend, down, descend, fall, occurs nine times in nine KJV verses. 41 times equals come down. 18 times equals descend, 41 times equals come down, and one time equals step down. On the other side of the coin, we have ascended, to go up, climb, up, come, occurs 86 times in 80 KGV verses, 37 times equals go up, 10 times equals come up, 10 times equals ascend, and 2 times equals grow up. 
Now we are going to go down to our who, what, where, when, why of it all. Basically, in this section, what we're be, uh, what we're trying to understand from Scripture is, uh, as it relates to the who, what, where, when, why, uh, what is in each verse, um, and, and how to really kind of um, delve into that. So, uh, in Ephesians four ten, who would be the who, or what would be the who? Ephesians 4.10, what, what who do we have? He. He, absolutely. And so we have two different he's. Who does this same he person. refer to? Okay, it's same person. Um, who is that person? Christ. Absolutely. Son of God, 100%. Uh, is there any other who that anybody sees? Hmm. All right, we're going to move on forward. What about a what? Evans? I'm well, handing the phone. I'm handing, I, I keep on calling the microphone today, so hey, you're just going to have to deal with that. Um, but I'm going to hand it on over to Mark here. So I see all heavens as a thing. In this case, um, okay. because it's not just a singular place, although it can be a place, but it is um, multiple in that regard. So is that a what? Okay, that's a what. Okay, any other what? Fulfill all things. Fulfill all things. I definitely have that on my list. And so I definitely see that. What is the what? To fulfill all things. What else? I guess that could also be a why, but. Well, certainly. And we've seen that many, many times where we uh, cross over and whatnot, for sure. I've got descended as a why. Yeah, that... yeah I, it's definitely something I got on my list. And the opposite of descend is what? Ascend. Ascend. Absolutely. Um, one hundred percent. Is there any other what here that anybody sees? Patty, did Patty have a well, thought? Well, that that yeah, that word fill all things. That was um, you know, the the word fill is the objective of the whole thing because the next verse goes into what he's going to fill uh, into the human family. Amen. Amen. Is the same. What's that? Is the same. Uh-huh. So, so I, it is I, not I, full fill. It is fill. I'm glad you brought that up. Interesting enough. Um, what I see, what I put on my list is same also. Yeah. But I can definitely see is the same fitting there too. Um, but help me understand why that's a what. Because we know, because we're talking about he, we're talking about Jesus, for we know that this whole conversation is about what? It's about Jesus because it is the same, but also we know that that's Jesus. He's the what in that is the same. It's basically almost like saying Jesus that descended is Jesus also that ascended. The poor problem is that Jesus might fill all things because it is basically, it, that is actually a who as well is the same. I didn't see that before, but yeah, is the same. Right, yeah, also. you're right. What? Okay. Yeah, wait, no. All right. No. Sorry. Good to go forward. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, so Mark, here's uh, Mark. Here's Mark. Okay. So I have we've observed. It seems like we have a lot of different what's in this, and so they, uh, I was just thinking about how they're related together. He descended, the same also, ascend, the all the heavens, and fulfill. Um, I I just see that a, a connection between a, a connection and a progression of what Christ is doing every place um, in every part of it. He's he's coming down and he's doing something and he's going back and he's doing something else and it's it's a um, progression. Amen. Right. Amen. All okay, right. I got to make a correction. Go, go ahead. I got I, I to make a correction. I I imported the word full fill, and it's not. 
That word is fill. Fair if, enough. If Christ was to fulfill all things, that is one aspect, which we know that he did. But in this context, he's not fulfilling. Like Patty just brought out, it is to fill all things. So fair, there's fair a enough. there is a forward Amen. thinking uh, process here to fill all things rather than a past thinking of fulfill. And I, I inappropriately said the word full instead of just fill. Good correction. Good correction. Caller four, who do we have on the line for caller four today? This is Brother Kyle calling back in. Oh, okay. <laughs> All righty. Cool. Yeah, I don't know the... Uh, I, 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 I'm going to, I'm just going to say this. I, I, I think you can be welcome back in this time too. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. So, and, um, Anthony, yes. Yeah, I'll have something to say. Well, what did he yeah. hear? What? Explain. Because, can you hear what she's saying? No, I cannot. No. You speak up. Well, didn't he be another what? Because, um, so is which which he word? Is, is. She's on about he. We know it's a who. But what she's saying is, because of the context of the sentence, and with it being in brackets, he is the what, he's the subject of the full brackets, isn't he? He is what fills things. He is what ascended. He is what descended. He is the he is the what without him there is no there is no Interesting. what. I, I can get that. I, I can, can get, get it. it. Yep. Yeah. Both for right. who and what. Yep. Yeah. He's definitely a who, and I definitely can see, uh, based on the way that that flowed forward, I can see it being the what too. I've got another who now as well. Oh no, we can't go back. Let's, <laughs> what into the... I'm sorry, but John brought this one out. It's John's fault. <laughs> okay, we, we can blame John's John. Fault. Okay, go ahead, Anthony. All things. Hmm. Because mm. we're, to, we're to be filled with his spirit so that we can descend and ascend with him. When we descend, we can ascend with him. True. Because we're, we, well, we are the definition of being in that case. I can see that. I can see that. Well, and, and the earth is the Lord in the fullness thereof. It is only in man that he is not expressing his full capacity Amen. and glory. Amen. Amen. Um, um, uh, Guy, would it be all right if I just read a couple of things real quick on the uh, Strong's Concordance in regards to the word fill, just to back up what my correction was? Certainly. Okay. To make full, to fill up, to cause to abound, to furnish or supply liberally. Okay. To let fill me, to the let top. me understand for just a minute. This is fill. This is the word fill. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, to fill to the top so that nothing shall be wanting to full measure. And it goes on. But that's those are those are perfect to represent. Uh, because as we go into the next verses, then, then those things to furnish or supply liberally, to cause to abound um, the gifts. And remember in verse 8, he ascended up on and led captive and gave gifts unto them, unto men. So then in the parentheses, we go through 9 and 10 to acknowledge that he was up and down. And then for the purpose that he might fill abundantly so that nothing shall be wanting to full measure, which is really a hopeful and, and beautiful thing. Amen. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Amen. And he's, he's filling it with himself. He is bringing the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ to fullness right. by himself. Through, a, through he, us. He, yeah, he wants to bring his fullness through us so that the world might see and believe that the Father has loved us the same way he loved the Son and will love them if they believe. Amen. Amen. It record, yeah, that word might, it brings in like the element of human choice. Well, it does bring in human choice. But because basically saying he might, I mean, the because only... what's the only thing that would make that 
he might not. Our rejection of it. Absolutely. There you go. And then they have back to the wrath of God again and destruction and whatnot is is not based on the actions of Jesus Christ. How simple is it just to put your hands up and say, I need you, I need you more than anything? And is that not the filling of the greatest commandment that we are to love God with our heart, with all our heart and all our soul? Okay. Amen. Uh, so we're going to go on to aware. What do we have for aware? Heaven. <clears throat> for above all heavens, which indicates there's different types of heavens. And if we look up into the sky, we see a heaven. But that's not the kingdom of heaven. That just that's the sky. Um, so this kingdom of heaven is above all heavens. Would he be another one? Okay. Somebody's trying to say something? Yeah, Scarlett, I can barely hear you. Not speak up, Scarlett. Okay, sorry. Would he be another one? Oh, yeah. you want to be here too, eh? You're causing trouble today, I see. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Uh, he... All right, you're gonna to have to help me. How is he aware? Because to um um to be able to go to heaven, which is another um where you have to um go on. You have to be one with Christ. Jesus, so you have to be one with Christ. Which is another she's saying you, you need to speak up. She's okay. saying you need to be one. With Christ, you have to abide in. She means that you have to abide in Him. In Him, so that's where. Mm -hmm. Where are you supposed to be? And I, okay, I, I agree. I, I'm going to have to uh, agree with Scarlett again because, yeah, we we need to be in Him. Yeah, I I, I would definitely agree. Uh, Mark. In His mind, in the mind of Christ, in in. And him in us, so there's a there's a definite where there. Oh, and so he, he, I was going to make a comment about the the far above yeah. comment there, and I think about it. You know, there's obviously the physical location of above, but I think this is this is talking much deeper than that. There's hmm. far above in authority, far above in power, far above mm -hmm. in in glory, far above mm -hmm. in in um, the the homage of his people. Amen. Amen. He, oh. he went he went that he went that far up. He goes to a place where there is no possessions, because he even laid down his life. And you see the parable with the other parable, the story of the rich young man. Who, uh, who comes to Jesus saying, I've done this, I've done that, I've followed the Ten Commandments, I'm perfect. And he says, now give up all your possessions. And when the man reflects on what his possessions value to his life, we see that the man's telling lies because if he was perfect, we wouldn't need Christ because Christ goes to a place where there is no possessions. He's like, he, he is given absolutely everything, laid it down for everything. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that's where he wants us to ascend with him to, to lay our lives down, to pick up our cross and to follow him to that place. Amen. I'd also see that he operated in the spirit, which man could not. We were bound by the flesh. And just like the Tower of Babel, all of our best human efforts were in vain because we're building on the flesh. We can't get anywhere with that. So when he came, he came to Amen. set the way or pave the path or open the door to the power of walking in the spirit of truth and no longer in the flesh. It was because we could not free ourselves from the, the, the mortal human condition, which is what led us to understand our need for a savior. And now it's saying this one has come. He's come down and he's went back up. But then when I was thinking about all heavens, there's a heaven that people hope for that is not real. So he is establishing the truth because God is the way, the truth, and the, or Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. So in order to defeat the enemy, he has to fulfill Amen. the truth 
in us. The measure of fullness of Christ is the truth. So he's establishing himself above the, 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 the vain imaginations that has established a carnal heaven, a man-made heaven that people Amen. hope in vain, in vain for because of man-made religion. So he comes to clear the record because he doesn't like how people are using this this disconnect wow. of sin between God and his children as wow. an occasion to enslave his children. They're using the, the problem that Christ has come to solve as a perpetual cycle of enslavement to make huh. people slaves to guilt, shame, and condemnation, Amen. never stepping into the freedom of the grace that is paid for and finished, John 19.30. Amen. It, That's very, great. Very well said. There's only one, <clears throat> one thing that I would adjust. Uh, I definitely get where you're coming from with the flesh. However, I think at one point you did say we can't operate in the spirit. Uh, I, would, I would challenge that because we can operate in the spirit. We come from the flesh to start with. But as we take the spirit of Christ upon us, we become able to enter into a realm that is otherwise foreign to us. Oh, amen. Okay. I, was, I was saying before yeah, it, Christ came, we, we didn't have access to the spirit. But now that he has come, we all have direct access through Christ by grace through faith. Amen. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah, I that. That was, then, I it's like when the Hebrews escaped from Egypt. They wandered around the wilderness for umpteen years looking for the promised land when really the promised land, what was being told about was like within them because that's where the kingdom of God is built within us. It's built within us. We are the building blocks of it as well as brothers and sisters, the fellowship in Christ. They just wandered around blindly looking for it to a point that even when God's face, uh, the Lord's face, Jesus <laughs> came through Moses, they put a veil over it, they put a sheet over it and hid it, and they didn't want to see it, and they ran away from it. They clung to the darkness and clung to the flesh, the fleshy world. But it's bringing that world of the spirit through into this life. And what, what Kyle said that totally amazed me, and it, it well, I, I couldn't have seen anything better than this. I just couldn't have seen it. What he saw when he said, above all heavens, and we're not just talking about the the sky we're talking about man-made heavens like there is my man-made doctrine here is my man-made religion and when you get to heaven you have seven virgins and a and a camel do you know what i mean he's he's taking us to heavens above heavens he's 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 taking us to a place that's beyond even our capacity amen amen <clears throat> all right let's go to a why That he might fill all things. <laughs> yeah. That that that's that's exactly what I had. That's because he so much wants us to be one with him and the Father. He, 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 neither yeah. one of them want this to take place. There's another one that uh, couldn't care less that this takes place, and uh, or uh, about anything about our lives. That's not the father of the son of unconditional love, for uh, unconditional agape love, uh, right. but it is the enemy. But yeah, that's the why that I saw. Is there any other why? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. What I see, I see the I see verse ten as a why. I think that um, verse nine brings in the questions. Now that he ascended, what is he also first that? Did also descended first in the lower parts of the earth. It's a question. So obviously, if someone's asked a question, why did this, like basically asking, why did this happen? And this is why it happened. Because he that descended is the same that also ascended up far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. The whole verse mm -hmm. is a why. I'd say why. I'd say yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and go to... Uh... When would he be another one again? Because I mean, oh, there um, you are, Scarlett. You, you, you're, you're on that he bit today. So, yep, yep. Uh, why is he a why? Because, hmm. um, for you to descend, um, so you then you can ascend, 
Um, Jesus had to die. Jesus had to descend so everyone else could ascend. So, so why? Amen. Yeah, I would that's agree true. With you. I would agree with you. Amen. Yeah, yeah, that's true. True. Also, that he might fill all things, almost like he's trying to fill all things, but there's like yeah. one thing left that he just needs to fill. Yeah. Amen. He's zealous. It's he's like zealous in a good way. He's zealous exactly in a good way. And I think when you realize that, like when it says, for I am a jealous God in the Ten Commandments, and then you realize that etymology of jealous originates from zealous. So the original word jealous didn't exist, so it would have been written as zealous in, in that in that way, way of understanding. And then you realize, yeah, God is a zealous God. He, he, he's crazy passionate, you know what I mean? He is dedicated. And and I don't know about you, but I would feel some kind of way if my children didn't know I was their father and they, ref they, they, even though I'm the best thing for them, they somehow cannot acknowledge me. Like it would set something off in me that they are being deceived into believing that someone Amen. who is trying to hurt them is their Amen. father, but I am your father. I love you. So I'm going to get rid of him. <laughs> yeah. Amen. It's, it's like the understanding yeah, of jealousy, uh, even we, if you look at it. Jump in on that one uh, for a minute. How did he get rid of the devil? And we can turn to, uh, I know we shared it a little bit earlier, but I want to go one more verse. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Can somebody read Hebrews 2, 14 and 15 for me? Who's got that? Okay, Mark. Since then the children have shared in flesh and blood, he also himself in like manner partook of the same, that through death he might bring to nothing him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and might deliver all of them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. <laughs> So how exactly does the Son of God destroy the devil? It's in that verse. It's right there. Through bondage? What? Uh, well, that's that's what he sets us free from, Mark. By dying. Yes. But how does his death destroy the devil? Mark, is it? It, it's, uh, it does several things, but including taking away his influence, including giving us the the um, right and authority to choose what's right. So, so you use the word influence. I'd like to state a scripture at least as we're, as it reads in KJV. What what word is used in place of influence? Power. 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 He takes away the power of the devil by well, the devil basically wrote a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, uh, ransom note. And he sent it to uh, our, our parents or, you know, the father and the son. Um, and they had to choose if they were going to respond or how they were going to respond to that ransom note. And certainly they would never get to the point of having anyone step in and die for humanity that would just be insane until they did um and why they did was out of unconditional agape love um and it, go ahead kyle brother kyle so uh hebrews chapter 2 uh verse 15 at the end it says uh all their lifetime subject to bondage so the fear of death is something that we have been delivered from, and it is a bondage that was keeping us, like it was holding us, and he had to set us free yeah. from the fear of death, which created a power. Because I remember that it said that sin decked itself out with the law, or it used the law as a forbidden fruit to hide yeah. behind it and then entrap people into sin. So now Amen. it becomes 
become something that would hurt you. Amen. But it is a good thing that points out the goodness and good things, but then it became bad because of sin. So it's like he's he's addressing that thing, this Amen. misunderstanding that is causing death because we don't know the truth. I've got yeah. I've got something on this. Anthony. The law of sin and death. And what this is explaining to you here is that the devil has the power of death. And that, um, that basically it's also saying that we had a lifetime subject to bondage. So this is like the condition of man in his fallen state. Adam, Adam brought sin and death into the world. But when he brought sin and death into the world, he, he's, that's been consecrated as a law. And however you look at it, that law has been made by man. In the Ten Commandments, you're not supposed to copy anything that's done in heaven. Making laws is a thing that only God should do. So by believing in this law and the authority and the power of death, you, well, by believing in the power of death as Cain and Abel, what, what happened is basically the authority was given to the one who had the power of death. So that's the devil. So what people need to realize by this law of sin and death is that blindly, whether you were following this law blindly or whether someone is following this law intentionally, like on the flip side, they're like threatening people with death. They're frightening people. They're torturing people and punishing people to get what they want, um, the powers of this world. What you are doing, either way, is following Satan. You are his faithful follower bound in chains, bondage to that law, and Jesus Christ is coming to break the children of wrath and disobedience free from the bondage of this law, to free them, as Roman 8, 2 says, to the to the, uh, to the spirit of life in, in Christ Jesus, because that is what he's saving us from. We, we Our fate is sealed until he unseals it and reseals it in his, in his Father's name. Amen. In his father's image. Yeah. And as we're talking about, as we're talking about the uh, <clears throat> building fear and whatnot, you, you know that happened, you know, back in Bible times. But uh, they don't build fear for us today, do they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. Uh -huh. Yeah, John, John, you got that. Yeah, 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 I got that right. Uh, hey, um, he, I've got he, something to add, but we're running out of time, so I'm not sure if yeah. I should wait till next week. Hang on, hang on one second. So what I what I'm uh, saying here is, as we fall victim into the power of their deceptive lies, we have to realize that um, we don't have to be victims. We can be victors through Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Um, I, I, is it a couple minutes or what? What? How long? Is I think it I, I think it can make it fairly rapidly. In verse fourteen here of Hebrews two, Hebrews two fourteen, it says, um, and this is an extension. Um, it, it's kind of a deeper or or an expanded realization of what we're looking at at fourteen and fifteen uh, that are subject to bondage. But remember, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. And how do we take partake of the flesh? How, how do we experience something that we can actually witness that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? And here it is. For as much as children are partakers of flesh and blood, remember what Christ said, except you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of God, you have no life in you. And people were freaking out. But he said, the flesh profits nothing, folks. It's the words that I speak that are spirit and life. So as we receive those words, which is the mind of Christ, okay, that's what we receive that, that liberates us from the bondage that, that, is, that we're of death. Amen. But so we have to experience that in order, for, um, in order for him to be able to destroy him that has the power of death over us. Amen. It has to be done in us first. And then, Patty, did you have something? Well, yeah, I was just going to mention that uh, the, how the, he got the power of death, and that was uh, in Isaiah 54, uh, verse 16. It says, Behold, I have created the 
smith that bloweth the coals of fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work and i have created the waster to destroy so god had a provision made that if anyone or any being sinned that uh that the one that had the power of death which is lucifer he would just bear the shekinah and the shekinah glory would <clears throat> destroy sin but since he engaged in sin then god um said okay well we'll let this work its way out so only as sin can be totally destroyed will we no longer need uh any power over death uh, because he will have destroyed uh sin and the the reason for it and everything for eternity Amen. 15, 15 through the end uh just totally supports what you just said patty um what is that right. what's that what, First, what was that verse? verse yeah. what, what, First what, Corinthians 15, 53 through the end of the chapter. Amen. It definitely does. So, all right, let's bring this to a close. Who would like to close us in prayer? I'll do it. Go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today, for your daily, your, your knowledge, your bread, your hope, your spirit, your guidance. And your precious love. And I thank Amen. you for sending your beloved son down and dying on that cross that day for our sins and ascending up on high to the heavens and saving us and setting us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. And I pray Amen. for each one of these brothers and sisters on this call to be strengthened throughout the week, encouraged throughout the week in your name, Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Blessings to you all. Amen. All right. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.